Hi everyone, I'm Alex Noonan from Noonan Labs, and today I'm going to be talking about basic marketing analytics. In business, data is used to make better decisions. So, with that in mind, your analysis should be focused on generating actionable insights. Whenever you're modeling a process, you should focus on the effectiveness metrics, how well the process works, efficiency metrics, how well the process utilizes resources, and points of leverage, which are strategic focus points where resources can be concentrated for maximum effect. I'm going to be doing a code demo using a Python CoLab notebook, and the link is in the description if you want to follow along. So here we are in the CoLab notebook, and I like using these for quick analysis or testing since the feedback loop is really tight and you don't need to worry about messing with Python environments. In this project, I utilize DuckDB which is an in-process OLAP database. And it has a ton of cool use cases, but I like using it for analysis since it uses SQL syntax for data manipulation, which is a lot more approachable to me than Pandas for doing simple and more complex data transformations. So in this cell, we're taking these CSVs from the GitHub repo and loading them into uh, the DuckDB databases tables. So here we go, they're all in there. And then the first analysis we're gonna do is looking at the funnel or the user journey. And in marketing, the funnel is like the essential process that you're gonna be managing. A common exercise I do is I'll pull the data for how the user goes from like looking at the ad to making a purchase and to see if there's a stage in the funnel where users aren't moving to the next step. And that would indicate that the asset at that stage needs to be stepped up um, so we can address the drop off there. So we're pulling in impressions, clicks, and purchases, and then the percent at those stages. We're printing out a table here and we got this cool funnel chart here. Um, when you're looking at funnels, you'll often see a high amount of impressions to link clicks and purchases. And when you try to plot it all in one chart like this, um, the later stages can get lost in the noise just from scaling issues. So we have this neat tidy table here. And as we can see, ads two and three have good click rates, pretty good conversion rates. Ads four and one though, click rates all right, conversion rates not good. So that would indicate that we need to look at the landing page in this scenario and see if they're if we need to upgrade the design, if it is confusing, if the product copy needs to be tightened up, something like that to see if we can up that conversion rate some more. The next thing we're going to look at is geographic analysis. And whenever you're doing geographic analysis, 95% of the time, you're going to be looking at population density or proximity. In the other 5% of cases, you may stumble across something interesting. And as a Paradox gamer, I love maps, so I like making them, and my stakeholders enjoy some nice clean maps um, showing their traffic all across the U.S. and so on. So we are going to sum the purchases by cities and state. We're going to deduplicate the geographic data so we can have the latitude and longitude to plot these values, and then we are going to join it all together. And here we have the map. And like I said, uh, we got a lot of population density impact going on right now, where there's a lot of revenue in some of the major cities. But this Ashburn scenario, that's something interesting that we should explore further. And what I would do in this case is like get with the stakeholders or the sales team and be like, do we have any physical presence here? Can What do you think? Uh, is driving this. And next we're going to be looking at creative. And uh, a chart type I like to do for doing creative analysis is this bubble chart here where we have a mix of efficiency and effectiveness metrics. And uh, we have the conversion rate, cost per conversion, and then the website purchases as the size. Um, as you can see here, this quadrant, these ads are performing well. And then this quadrant, they aren't performing so good. Now, as Paul Tudor Jones says, losers average losers. So my recommendation in this case would be to kill ads one and four, 
since they are dragging down our ROI, but you may have business objectives where we need to run those campaigns. So in that case, what we would do is go back with our designers and see if we can upgrade the creative so it resonates with the audience more. And that may also tie together with the funnel analysis where there is a mix of user experience and ad creative are kind of weak and that's impacting sales. And finally, we're gonna do some time series analysis. With business data, time series is one of the most tom common types of analysis you'll do. And that's because uh, one, you usually have the data for it. And two, it's often the common dimension that's having the greatest influence on the data. Three things I look at when doing time series is trend, uh, and that's like upwards or downwards drift, momentum, the strength of that trend, and then cycles and seasons, whether that's seasonality relating to the month or some weekly cyclicality, something like that. And I randomly generated this data, so it's gonna be noisy, but we also have the aggregates by day of the week. Um, so as we can see here, Wednesdays and Fridays, underperforming sales, and then looking at the trend charts over here. We can see that, like I said, it's pretty noisy, but something that I would do in this case is get with the stakeholders that are close to the action and see what happened in these groups of days and also what happened during this trough here. And folks that are close to the action will have insights that won't show up in the data. So it's often one of my favorite exercises whenever I find an anomaly is to just get with the stakeholders and be like, what did you see here? What's your insight into this? Because a lot of times they will have a view of things that, like I said, doesn't show up in the data and their insight and context will help you as a data analyst and inform analysis going forward. So you can go to them with higher level questions instead of bogging them down with the simple stuff and they'll appreciate that more. So that's it for the analysis. Um, I hope you liked the video. Uh, please leave a comment if you got any questions or concerns, whatever. And uh, I'll be posting more data content, uh, so make sure you subscribe. And I'm pretty active on Twitter and LinkedIn, so make sure you connect with me there.